Quadri Den. In this week's episode, we're going to be building a dock pier. So, I kind of building a pier. <laughs> I mean, let me explain myself here. Um, so, really, I wanted to start building some more terrain uh, for Raise the Black. So, that's the new expansion that's coming out for Blood and Plunder. Uh, and uh, I wanted to make a pirate port. So, you've seen me. I've done a native villages. I've done a native port. I've done, uh, I call the Port of Plunder, uh, which could be used for any European nation. And I built several components to these projects. So I think kind of the next big project I want to do is uh, a port for the pirates. So Rays of Black is, uh, takes place in the uh, 18th century. So this is really the, the far end of the Golden Age of Piracy. And this is probably the time that most people are familiar with. Uh, with Blackbeard and, and such and, and those kind of uh, the pirates that people are most familiar with uh, and uh, so they're kind of like the the rock stars of that time frame let's let's say uh, and I kind of wanted to have more uh, terrain dedicated to that uh, now they had the kind of like their own empire and they had uh, islands that they would use for uh, their their base of operation let's say uh, so I kind of wanted to capture that uh, and build uh, 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 some terrain pieces around it. So I want to build a kind of like a whole port. I have all sorts of different uh, buildings in mind uh, that I want to do for uh, this kind of, uh, you know, for Race of Black. So the first piece is this pier. And uh, it really, I started building it. And I said, like, okay, well, I'll build a pier. I don't have one. I have lots of different docks. I built dock accessories. And there's also other videos we've done using docks. Uh, but uh, not a pier. So I started constructing it. And I'm like, you know what? This is just not, not as interesting as I wanted to be. And I said, you know what? Maybe they had a trading post on there. Uh, and this trading post got damaged and destroyed. And so I kind of wanted to do something a little more elaborate. And I figured maybe the pirates captured this trading post and turned it into like a tower or a base of operations somewhere they store all their cargo or their treasure. Or maybe they use it for, uh, you know, paying off. They used to, the pirates would come in with their treasure and they would give them gold for it and, and such. So maybe it was kind of being repurposed. Kind of put a little tower, crow's nest in it and this kind of thing. Uh, so I, I just wanted to kind of explain this terrain piece because I uh, kind of like, what? what? This doesn't really look like a pier. Well, it kind of does. So let's take a look at it and then maybe I can explain a little bit more by showing it to you. So here it is right here. Uh, and we're going to build this whole thing and paint it in this episode. So I kind of also uh, did... Uh, make this piece removable so this ladder of course just comes off i just uh, it's made a free ladder then we'll have to have a way to get up to the second level i figured to using this for like a spot tower or something like that right so then you pull that off uh and then really you could use this for like a world war ii game or even bolt action or uh, or uh uh blood and valor probably gonna use that for um you know maybe it's on the other side of an embankment in a, in a cityscape um, and just use it as a destroyed building. So I kind of wanted to have the top off. I don't know, kind of a thatched roof gives it a kind of a more of a Caribbean feel to it. Um, but it could be used in the, the Japanese theater of war in, in World War II. So there's a lots of uh, other potential uh, uses for this terrain. As I always do, I try to make things uh, multi multi purpose. Uh, but I did really focus this a little bit more on on raise the black and and getting into some pirate terrain. So uh, again, I got a whole bunch of different uh, ones I want to do, and I want to do a few series of videos where we build a bunch of pieces, and we kind of assemble this great uh, uh, pirate port, uh, and hopefully it'll co coincide with uh, uh, the actual Razor Black Kickstarter getting sent out, and uh, um, kind of do an episode where I kind of build some of those pieces and components from the Kickstarter and attach it to all the terrain that I built. I think it'll be a cool series uh, of uh, of uh, episodes. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den. And get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, well, let's get down to the table, let's start crafting, and let's start painting.
Okay, so let's uh, go over some of the materials I use for this project. I got some popsicle sticks. There's some of that uh, willow fencing in there. We got a little bit of dowels. Uh, we got assorted balsa wood, uh, and I have uh, insulation foam. Just chunks of it. Uh, that's my hobby bag of leftover parts. We got some match sticks in there, and some more uh, coffee stir sticks and that kind of thing. I've got some uh, twine, uh, and I got some pre-cut pieces here. So this is kind of in a shape of the pier that I already want, uh, and uh, a piece of dollar store foam board uh, that we're going to use for the base of this project. So this is the dollar store foam board. Uh, it's kind of a rounded shape. Uh, I've kind of wanted the uh, docks to go off in three different directions. And at this point, I wasn't really sure what the whole thing was going to look like. Uh, but I did want to make sure that it fit with my old um, dock system. So I kind of put it up there. Uh, that's a half-inch insulation foam, by the way, uh, on top of that dollar store foam board. Uh, and with that on, on, on the foam, with the popsicle stick, it's, it's actually the perfect size. So then I took my miniature and kind of just put them in the, the space here to see what it looks like uh, and uh, to see, uh, you know, exactly how I want to plan it out. And that's really kind of how I work. I just kind of put things out uh, and I just see how it's going to work. And I'm just to let you know that I'm going to uh, white glue that uh, foam to the bottom of the uh, foam board. So now I used uh, my X-Acto blade there, uh, and I just cut the edges of the foam, just to more uh, give it a more rounded shape. I didn't want it to be so boxy. Um, and I'm just showing you that I, I'm going to cut out these willow sticks into uh, kind of like posts, because I'm going to match the rest of the uh, uh, of the docks there. But I'm going to use willow fence instead this time, which has texture on it already, which is great. It'll save me a step. Um, and then uh, I'm just showing you I'm going to texturize some popsicle sticks. So then I got my tin foil ball here, uh, and I'm going to go over all the foam that I have here. I cut two rounder uh, round pieces, or I really I just cut it from the scraps that I had, uh, and I kind of uh, used it to uh, put off where I'm going to put the two other uh, extensions of the dock. So I knew I knew I needed to be a little bit higher in those areas. So I just cut these two round pieces off. So then, again, I'm going to use some white uh, tacky glue to glue those on. So then I, I just thought it was too boring just to have uh, a, a dock system like it just a pier. So I decided to build this uh, trading post, kind of a destroyed trading post that uh, I feel that the pirates are going to repurpose. And, was, uh, and this is kind of where the idea came. Uh, I just wanted to do something more with that piece. Um so then I cut some balsa wood out, uh, and that's the coffee stir sticks, and I am using some match sticks. And really what I'm doing there is framing out the windows uh, of the foam. So I kind of cut the general shape out, uh, and then I frame it all out with that balsa wood and match sticks and, uh, and the coffee stir sticks, and it gets your nice-looking sharp windows. And I just used that white tacky glue to glue that all together, and then I glued the walls permanently in place on top of that foam. So then I'm kind of uh, going back to the posts again. So I have them all cut out now uh, and really deciding how I'm going to lay them out on there. So you can see I cut three, three or four different uh, sizes and uh, different uh, uh, thicknesses of, the, of the, the willow sticks. So I got a nice little assortment. I like the mixed, uh, just similar to the docks, uh, the mixed posts. So this is after I've decided where I'm going to put them. So I decided four on the entrance way, two on either side of where the docks will come off of. Uh, and that's kind of how I decided to lay it out. So then I started building the second floor. So I got some balsa wood here and I decided to put a post and then some just kind of edging on there because that's where the uh, roof is going to sit on top. Uh, and then we got uh, some more balsa wood framing and just kind of really building out uh, the base of the, of the second floor. You can see that I've got all the posts in place, so everything's kind of glued together here uh, pretty much. Uh, and then I'm going to start contemplating putting in the uh, popsicle sticks, probably just on the round pieces and the main pathway first. Uh, but then uh, really, really what I want to do first is add the black crab paint on there. Uh, and, and mainly, uh, it's just easier to paint it afterwards if the base already is black before you start gluing things on top. Uh, in the past, I would have actually just glued everything together and then painted it. 
But I find that this works, uh, method works better. It actually makes your piece sturdier as you go along because the craft paint kind of uh, glues it, uh, you know, reinforces it. And then you can add more things. It's easier to work with your piece too because it's a lot more solid. So I know I already showed you that I'm going to texturize these again, but I just wanted to mention it again that I'm going to skewer those uh, with that knife. Uh, and then these are uh, insulation foams that I'm going to cut into bricks that are going to be glued on the outside of the outside to make a brick uh, structure. Uh, and then the chunks, I'm going to cut into these boulders. And this is similar to the seawall that I built in the past. Uh, similar idea. Uh, and uh, that's my... Uh, coffee tin there. I'm just going to put everything in there, shake it up for about four or five minutes uh, and give it some texture. So then I started laying out those popsicle sticks uh, and to give it a more rustic edge on it. These are my, uh, my clippers I use here really and I just kind of bend it off the edge and snap them uh, and it gives it a real rustic look to it. Uh, like it's got some old planks that they used. Uh, again, similar to my docks. I want everything to feel like it's all part of the same world. It can all be connected to each other. Uh, and that's why I'm using very similar techniques here so it all matches. So I can interchange all my, my pieces. So I'm just showing you, uh, I started adding, I actually had some leftover bricks from a previous project. So I started laying in the base of the bricks, mainly because uh, I want them to be on there first before I, I kind of put the, um, the, the popsicle sticks in there. So I kind of decided that as I went along, I wanted to get those bricks in there right away. So as you can see, I've, I've done the, the three docks uh, sections leading off of the pier. Uh, and I've already laid the popsicle sticks in. So now I'm just showing you, I'm going to cover the rest of the walls in bricks. And I'm only going to do the outside of the wall. The inside of the wall I just is texturized uh, uh, dollar store foam board. Uh, and then I decided to, uh, it would make sense that there would be another set of framed windows up top. So I just cut that out to right above the other side, and I just put some more balsa wood and stuff in there. And I'll just show you. This is kind of how I apply my bricks. I just lay the glue on thick, uh, and then I just kind of just randomly put my bricks on there. Now you can see I kind of made a bunch of them all in different shapes, and like all over the place, like it's broken wall. Uh, I kind of have a pile out back there where there's a little corner of the wall. Uh, and then I moved on to adding my boulders. Now I came to the conclusion that I cut the front straight and I was going to need to add an extension uh, to have it. Because it's supposed to be a, a breaker wall, right, for the ocean. And I figured it did make sense that it would be right up to the, the front of the side. This is something that I changed as I went along. I realized that I needed to add that breaker wall to the front. So uh, all I did was uh, glue that on with white tacky glue and then, and then added my, uh, my boulders to the front. So now we're going to work on building a basic structure for the top second floor. Now, I, I always want it to be removable uh, and something you can pull away. But I decided before I did that, uh, I went and did the rest of the uh, base floor. So this is the structure I have. So it's just kind of like a torn up piece of flooring piece, really, uh, that I glued together. That's just... Um, Popsicle sticks, and then, of course, there's a couple of uh, smaller uh, coffee stir sticks holding the bottom together. Uh, and it just fitted into frame into that space, so it, it fits snug in there. So once you put that top on it, it kind of sits in place. And then I decided to abandon the twine and went to hobby, uh, uh, hobby twine. Now this stuff has a little piece of wire in it, so it, it bends around shapes real easy. I think I'm, from now on I'm going to use that for my docks, for my ropes on my docks. It's just so much easier. It's easier to glue it on. Uh, so I decided to go in that direction. So now that we've added on everything on here, I want to paint the bottom. And mainly because I just want to stop any potential warping. There wasn't at this point. But just in case, so I painted the bottom to counteract any potential warping from me gluing everything on the top. So then I added some basic posts to that second floor, just making it look like they made it like a guard tower or, or some kind of basic roof up there, uh, obviously to keep people shade in the hot sun uh, up there. So they made it kind of a just a basic roofing up there. So I used some of that willow fencing, and then I just glued some balsa wood on top. 
All right, and then I decided to give it a more Caribbean feel, or I decided to add a thatched roof to it. Uh, and I, in my previous two episodes, I've been working a lot with this torn up rope. Uh, so if you, you refer to those two episodes, and you can see how I made my uh, thatched roof. Uh, and that's all I did. I just glued it on there. So now my little piece is removable. It's all set. Uh, so like I said, you can take it apart and use this as a, like a World War II or Blood and Valor game. Or just keep it on top and uh, it gets more of a piratey Caribbean feel. So I kind of wanted that to be an interchangeable piece that I could take off there. So then I showed you the black craft paint. I covered everything in black craft paint. Uh, and then came to the conclusion, how do I get to the second floor? <laughs> I'm like, well, let's build a ladder. So that's willow fencing. And that's all I did. I, I just slapped a ladder together with some white glue. Uh, and then I kind of added these, just a little bit of black paint in some of the ridges where, where it, the willow fence was overlapped. Just to overemphasize that it's overlapped uh, thatched roof. And this is after I've added all the black craft paint. And this kind of really just is the ultimate seals everything in. Uh, it gives you a really good base. Now, everybody knows uh, when I paint things, I'm kind of tough on my paint paint job. I get really rough with my brushes, so I want to make sure that everything is sealed in nice. Um, and that black craft paint does a really good job. It's That's folk art black craft paint. So then I'm going to move to real brown, bark brown, and pablo. I'm not going to show you a lot of this. Again, uh, I've mentioned this in, in all my videos. This is the base colors that I use and all my terrain. Uh, and I just kind of lay them in layers. I start with the real brown first, the bark brown second, and the pablo third. And I'm just going to cover this entire piece. As so to save time in this video, uh, I'm just going to give you a basic overrun. All I would say is make it a little brighter in the middle of the docks uh, because we want to emphasize that weathering on the docks. So I hit the, the ladder too, by the way, uh, and the upper floor. So this is after I added all those colors. You can see it's a little bit lighter in the middle of the docks. I got highlights everywhere. This just gives you a nice undertone to everything. So when you start adding other colors on, you got all those earth tones in there. And that's why I really do it. I, I really like the way it looks underneath. And again, it makes everything match together. So it matches all the rest of the pre-existing terrain I already have. So it looks like it matches uh, the rest of the world that I'm working in. So then we're going to go to some real brown and yellow ochre. And really why we're doing this is because we're going to start painting the top of the, the docks here. Now, I've done this technique uh, in some of the fortifications and all my dock videos. So I'm not really going to show a whole lot of that because I've already done that before. Uh, and that's uh, camel, uh, desert yellow, uh, skeleton bone, uh, necrotic flesh, and mummy robe. And those are all the colors I use for stone. Again, this is something that I've shown in several videos. I even have a separate video where I just cover painting of stone. Uh, and uh, I use those techniques to paint all my uh, my stonework here. So again, just saving some time. I'm not going to cover that. Uh, I've already covered that in the past. I, you know, If you want to watch those videos, I have other videos on it specifically on those areas. So I decided to stop at a few key areas while I was painting just to kind of give you some emphasizing how I do things. So this is me adding that yellow ochre and uh, brown mixture. And you can see that's kind of a dry brush I have on there. But I, I don't necessarily use it to dry brush this. I kind of rub the paint on. And again, like I said, I've shown this technique before. But uh, I just figured I'd just uh, highlight it right on here. And this is all I do. And well, once I add the um, real brown and ochre, yellow ochre mixture... I let that uh, kind of dry, and then I go back over with just yellow ochre on its own, just to highlight everything. So then I'm going to show you a bit of a step where I'm painting the stone. Uh, you can see the kind of I just got a flat square brush, uh, and actually the color that I'm working with right now is uh, is necrotic flesh, uh, and it's more of a kind of a greeny color and it just like one of them pliers a little bit of a plant life in here so i've kind of added some of the other colors already and i'm just showing you that i kind of uh randomly put it on uh, and i just wanted to show you a little bit of how i apply it you can see it's some areas i'll add a lot of paint on some areas uh, i'll just drag the brush with barely any paint on it uh, and you can see that i don't use my best brushes for this really i have lots of brushes that are like 
not really in the greatest shape. <laughs> and I just kind of use those to uh, to add my uh, texture to my stones. Actually, I kind of like just the way the brush is all bangled like that. Kind of gives you a nice a little pattern on your on your stones there. So you don't need to use your finest for this. <laughs> Definitely, uh, you can use some of your, your crappier brushes. Well, what I suggest is don't throw any of your brushes out. Like, I have jars of brushes at uh, different states of uh, of usefulness, let's put it that way. I mean, some of them are going to get pretty ratty, but then I got my brand new brushes that I use for more, uh, you know, detailed work. So, again, we're just going around here uh, showing you all the different areas that I'm uh, hitting I just kind of wanted to show a little bit of the stonework. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I wanted to show you a little bit of how I apply those colors. So now I use the uh, Necromancer Cloak, Ash Gray, Hardened Leather, and some uh, Matte White. Uh, and this is uh, really for the wood. I'm going to age, uh, just give it a little bit of uh, aging on the wood. Uh, and I decided I want uh, my windows to be kind of uh, like they had white paint on there. I've done this in the past where I did the ruins. I used a, a bright blue. I do recommend if you're going to do like a kind of like a remnants of paint on a windowsill or something like that, use a brighter color. If you're using a, a more a muted or darker color, it's harder to see that it's, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, let's say, capture the effect of like paint peeling on a window. So really, I just put a very little on my brush, and I'm just going to show you that technique right now. And I kind of just drag it on there where I want it to be. So it just kind of looks like there's a little bit of paint left over. Um, I would try to get as many of the edges as you can. Uh, if you see how paint falls off on things in uh, real life, usually uh, it will the paint will stay on the edges or corners uh, of things. And that's where it stays first, but as a uh, and fades really more to the center, uh, that's where it usually falls off. So you kind of just keep that in mind when you're adding the paint. Um, and that's really all I'm doing here. It just gives it a kind of a it looks like the the paint's just falling off and it's just really weathered. Oh, I made a bit of a blob there. <laughs> kind of missed my thing there. Ah, I'll go back and get it with something else. My finger's just not sufficient. Uh, that's fine. I'll cover that up with some other colors. So I just wanted to show a little bit of this, how I apply this. Uh, I, I have been asked uh, in the past to spend a little more time on that uh, particular portion of it, um, uh, mainly because I've done buildings where I've done this kind of uh, look to it, uh, where the paint's just chipping away on it. All right, so this is after I've kind of added that on there. Uh, and uh, and uh, just wanted to show you what it looks like uh, when I'm done. So I also added uh, some, uh, uh, you can see hardened leather on a few places just to make it look a little more stained. So not only did I hit the wood, I hit some of the stonework a little bit just to give it a little more, uh, like there's some kind of rain or it damaged it and, and created some some kind of spots on it. I'm going to use these other colors, uh, Skeleton Horde, Agrax Earth Shader, Sterling Mud, Grim Black, and uh, Commando Green. And really, this is just my final uh, kind of weathering of everything. I use all those colors, and I'm just going to cover the entire piece in strategic spots um, uh, to cover uh, everything. So this is after I've kind of added all that. So the Skeleton... Uh, uh, hoard there i kind of added it to the uh bindings on the uh, uh the posts uh, and i decided to stop and show you the sterling mud so i've added these in several pieces but i've never actually shown myself actually apply it so <laughs> we're going to spend some time in this video uh adding it on there so sterling mud is uh it's a games workshop product uh it is uh it has a muddy texture to it already so it looks like mud uh, so it's already pre-mixed the right color, and it's really got a muddy feel to it. Uh, so this is actually great stuff for this particular project because that's what I want it to be around the rocks. Uh, I want it to have a real muddy feel to it. Uh, so this uh, was actually the, the perfect product to use. All right, so then I went back to Mummy Robe for one final coat. Uh, and really what I'm going to use this for is uh, like stippling or just 
poking it like that uh, just to add little white dots. I don't, if you look at aged stone, um, it gets a lot of little white dots or, or specks all over it. Um, I don't know if it's from uh, growth of uh, a plant life, uh, but I've noticed that uh, you see that a lot on, you either get, uh, and when it gets aged, it get, like the plant life gets old, it turns black. So you get kind of white spots and black spots. And, and so I kind of wanted to add that in here. Uh, it just This is really just me observing <laughs> stone in real life and how it looks. Well, I will always suggest is go on the internet, look at a lot of different uh, uh, old rustic buildings and, and stuff that's been sitting around and, and weathered and old ruins. Uh, and uh, you can really see all the different uh, colors and stuff in, in, the, in the stonework. So I really wanted to spend some time in, in this project and capture that. So, by the way, all those <laughs> contracts and co uh, contrast colors and other things, I did add it to the thatched roof a little bit to give it a little more color so it wasn't just that bright thatched roof. Uh, and then this is the final steps of uh, putting some of that cheap dollar store uh, moss that I've been using, which is really cool, and some sand. I got a few tufts from Army a Painter that I'm going to use, but I'm going to... Again, trying to stay away from uh, as, as much as that as I can. Uh, it just gets a little more pricier uh, if I could find a cheaper alternative. Wouldn't mind doing an episode where I'd try to make my own tufts, which would be, would be really cool. All right, so let's take a look at the completed project. So we got French buccaneers here uh, trying to uh, attack this pirate port. Now, that little uh, wheel was the skull of it. I actually got that at the pet store. I do recommend you go over to Pet Ladder right now. They got a, they just added that to their store line. And I think it would make a good trophy, actually, uh, for Blood and Plunder tournaments. But anyways, let's get back to, <laughs> as a side note, uh, the completed project. So I'm really happy how this turned out. Fits great in with my sea walls and my pre-existing docks already. Uh, and it really became the vision I wanted to. So this is really the first piece in a series of, that I want to do for this pirate port. I was thinking about doing like a, like an Undertaker and have uh, there's a, a picture of one from Pirates of the Caribbean. I definitely want to kind of add that to this. Uh, I do want to make a new inn. So I have the Boar's Head Inn, which is you know it was one of my first terrain projects, and I, I think I could make a much more elaborate piece where you could play inside of it. So I do want to make like a new bar or inn. Uh, definitely they would have that uh, in, in, a, in a pirate port. So those are some of the projects that I read off the top of my head. But there's some other things I'm thinking about to add to it uh, and really flush out that, uh, that port. All right. Uh, this is pretty much it. Wrap for this video. I hope you guys...